But also this morning we want to talk about Five Waters. We now call it Five Waters. Um, the controversial legislation to change the way that uh, water resources currently administered by local bodies are governed in New Zealand, giving what the government calls co-governance, and in some cases I would say limited sovereignty to Māori or iwi hapu groups, um, covering uh, stormwater, reticulated freshwater or freshwater, and now coastal water and stormwater as well. So huge changes being pushed through under urgency before Christmas. And then we find yesterday, uh, or over the last few days, that part of the provisions of this legislation under urgency is an entrenchment clause, um, which entrenches part of the legislation. What it's about actually doesn't really matter, though the government's trying to play cute with that. Entrenching part of this legislation that could only be reversed or changed with a 60% vote in Parliament, which has the constitutional lawyers absolutely bloody fizzing and outraged at that. So the Prime Minister, as she seems to do quite a lot lately, was walking back that proposal yesterday. She says it's going to go back to a select committee. My question is, did it ever go to a select committee in the first place? Well, to find out and to get uh, her view on uh, three, three, now five waters, Someone who's becoming fast becoming the expert for the platform on this, our good friend Tina Nixon. Tina, how are you? Oh, I'm hardly a bloody expert, but <laughs> I'm certainly following the issue, and it was uh, fascinating yesterday to see the, I wouldn't call the Prime Minister walking it back, I think she ran. Um, as soon as she realised, um, or I suspect faced the open letter from the lawyers who had raised the issue um, in um, the open letter in the Herald yesterday. Uh, she just was on every media platform apart from the platform um, saying, whoops, um, we might have stuffed up here and we're going to take this to Cabinet. Um, oh, she but, now says uh, they're going to go, it went to Cabinet yesterday. They're now saying they're going to refer it. Now, this is funny, refer it back to the House's Business Committee. Well, it never went there in yeah. the body first place. So that's a complete misrepresentation because yeah. this was just... Eugenie Sage slipping it into the bill at the last moment. Well, you have to wonder that Mahuta is not running the country because Woods didn't know about it, Hipkins didn't know about it, Robertson didn't know about it, and the PM didn't know about it. So here's a major constitutional change, and uh, and a change that that had such ramifications to democracy in the future as as uh, uh, Kiwi blog um, David Farah has pointed out. I mean, it's shaken him to his core, and and, and so he, here it is, and and yeah, I, I mean, none of them knew about it, and and so. Mahuta's changes around the three waters, you would have to say, have probably not passed the scrutiny um, of, his, of, of her colleagues. Do and we I have, quite, Tina? Quite I wonder, yeah, look, it's an interesting point you raise. I wonder if we don't essentially have two governments operating in New Zealand, the Adern led Labour Party and the Mahuta led the Maori, Labor, caucus. Maori Caucus, and that they operate. And when you look at the terms of the Treaty of Waitangi, they operate almost as separate entities. Yeah, oh, you would have to say that when it, look, when you've got this stuff coming at you like a freight train um, and it's just been run by Mahuta, and, and it was, um, then yes, I, I, I think there's a definite discord in amongst the Cabinet. And then there's the issue of David Parker. And there has been a number of commentators raised this, yeah, week, as uh, we talked about it last week. Yeah. He doesn't think co-governance is a good thing. He's absolutely adamant that it's not. It's not required in the RMA. However, he has got some fish hooks in the RMA that um, are described as particularly gnarly around some of the Māori issues and, and consultation. Um, so, you know, at the end of the day, we've we've got a real discord in Parliament and they're keeping it, they're, so far they've kept it under wraps, but now it's clearly um, in this last week is evidence that there is definitely a split, an ideological split in Cabinet. Uh, a schism uh, between those who are co-governance obsessed and those who are co-governance cautious or shared power uh, cautious, uh, I, I guess. The problem yeah, is I'm trying to absolutely. figure out where the Prime Minister stands on this. 
Well, you know, someone suspect suggested that this was actually raised so that they could get on their high horse and say, oh, look, aren't we wonderful? We're stopping privatisation. There is enough in this bill to stop privatisation now. Uh, and at the end of the day, the fact that the, the, there is still some, some major issues around how the financing is going to work on this. And at, at, at the end of the day, the people who are going to be investing in these uh, entities are going to be laughing all the way to the bank because it's government guaranteed. Yeah. Um, so they don't have any problems. So the pri- there is privatisation of the profits. <laughs> no doubt about that. Uh, and people haven't quite woken up to that yet. So all of the all of the profits from these um, fr- from basically from these organisations will go offshore. Um, and, and and you could say essentially that Maori. Um, have control um, via uh, the Tamanawhiti Wai statements and their co-governance at uh, the regional um, committee levels um, it, it, or the, the, the entity levels. Uh, so you know, at the end of the day, there there is um, some more scrutiny that's required around some other aspects of this bill. The trouble is, we just got we just haven't got the time, and it's such dry as dust. Stuff. There's only four or five people who probably really understand what's going on in the country. Mm. Uh, Tina, you do some work with Naitahu, right? We've declared that before. Yep. Yep. Um, how do Māori, how do the existing Māori power structures, iwi groups, corporations feel about the controversy that has been generated by this? Well, uh, that's a really interesting point because um, there, there is... The entities themselves, uh, and NITO in particular at the moment, are, are fighting issues on water, which I'm not involved in. Uh, and, and and so they're very strong on these issues. The rank and file, I would say, may be quite different. Uh, and I'm certainly getting a lot of feel from some of my cousins um, and friends um, who are, are increasingly uncomfortable with the way some of the iwi entities are chasing some of these issues and feel that there is... But they're, they're suffering, I think, um, a little bit of um, from people in their own communities looking and saying to them that, you know, how, how do they feel as a Māori? And they're not comfortable. They're just not comfortable um, because they, they feel like they're being singled out um, over the sort of separatist policies and the sovereignty policies of the iwi entities. And yet, that's not really, really where they want to, to have yeah. things to be, and um, and so there is a level of uncomfortableness around some of these issues um, in the rank and file. And at the end of the day, we still got some real problems with the Māori around crime, education statistics, health statistics, and all of that. And and uh, a lot of our people would rather see the uh, some more effort put into those things. Um, rather than these bigger issues. And, and that's fair. Uh, um, it, it, there is probably a place for, for, for effort to go into both. Um, but, you know, the more I talk to some of my Māori mates um, and cousins, they, they're like, you yeah, know, look, seriously, we're getting sick of being asked at a party how we think about this shit when we really, we really actually really uncomfortable and feel like it's dividing our communities. Wow. So there is, yeah. two, there is two sides to this story. Mm. Mm. Tina, and, um, you know, so so the entrenchment, and I don't know why they let Eugenie Sage do that. Just so obviously, well, even to as a I like, said, it's either the cock up theory, and 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 it was really Eugenie was just because you know she just uh, the only thing that the it, 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 she was really strong all the way through around the privatisation, or whether Mahuta jacked her up to do it. Um, so that then they could come swinging and going, oh, this is just all about us, making sure that this whole thing is not going to be privatised. Aren't we good? Mm. Because they're not good on any other front. So this was one that they could have gained a bit of kudos. And if you do a bit of a scan across social media, the trolls and the, and the Labor supporters are out in force. Saying, it's all, saying um, it's all about privatisation bullshit. It's all about privatisation. Yeah. So there probably is some merit um, in thinking that this was a bit of a jack-up by Labor to fly a kite. Yeah. Um, and But it's a very, very dangerous kite, and I do not yeah, think they would have And it sounds to me like, like, like the string of the kite is going to be snipped and it will fall to the ground. Um, yeah. Let's and hope. when you get your experts, your academic experts going, don't be stupid, um, that, that this opens the door um, for the, a, a misuse of um, something that's really for a structural change that everyone agrees with. Meantime, Tina, our staff are being hired and these new water administration structures are being set up, aren't they? Oh, look, seriously. I, I mean, the um, gravy I, train I, is I, rolling. 
Yeah, it is. And, um, you know, John, the, the Auditor General, no one's taking much notice of what the Auditor General's been saying about the public service, but someone needs to. Well, I've, I've never seen an Auditor General come out so strongly and say that the, the uh, public service is, is lacking in accountability and transparency. And he singled out some issues around um, the three waters, which some have been addressed. Um, but there are some other, uh, other major issues in the public service, and I think someone needs to go in and have a real serious look at what DIA is currently doing, the money that they're spending, that the government misspent, which Treasury's already pointed out. Um, they, they took the COVID money and, and sunk it into the three waters against Treasury advice. Yeah. Um, you know, it, there's, there's so much just happening in this space and someone needs to, to just, just to keep asking, you know, where is the money going? What's going to happen here? And my understanding is councils are still saying that this is going to cost them to implement and that the provision of information is still so great. And and then they just they just lie about stuff. I mean, the Prime Minister is still still trying to say that these reforms will save people money and that, you know, if they don't en enact these reforms, that their water rates bills will go up significantly. And Wayne Brown's already bloody cut the feet from, from the Prime Minister on this by saying, you, well, you didn't get your information from us and you're wrong. You're absolutely wrong. And then Grant Robertson comes out, uh, you know, a couple of days later and goes, well, the bills are still going to go up, but maybe not just as much under these reforms. Because actually, the, no one believes the figures anyway. And these reforms are so expensive um, and the program is so big, and in some cases probably not necessary, uh, that people are going to be faced with massive bills with organisations that are not going to be fit for purpose and are not going to be governed and, and monitored well because the economic regulator is not going to be in place in time to ensure that, yeah. that, that um, all those checks and balances are in place. The economic regulator is not going to be in until I think it's 2027. Mm. And the Scottish regulator guy come over here and says, don't do that, don't be stupid. They'll end up with big, flabby, bloody organisations um, that actually aren't very good and are not transparent and are just woeful. Um, you need the economic regulator in to keep them honest. Mm. Well, you know, just imagine how that's going to look in two or three years' time. Yeah, uh, sounds like a cluster F to me, Tina. I thank you for your time this morning. Always a pleasure. We'll talk soon. That is uh, Tina Nixon, our kind of resident expert on Three Waters. Someone's pointed out that it has been revealed that entrenchment of the non-privatisation has been discussed for some time amongst the plethora of committees and paper shovers have been involved in these changes. And they were talking about 75%, I think, back in May. So, yes, this isn't a surprise. The, gov uh, the Prime Minister was running it back yesterday only because I think she figured they'd been caught. They'd been caught and they weren't going to get away with it. And it just seems to me this government right now is stuck in mea culpa. Our fault, we'll put it right mode, on a whole lot of issues. And Tina are also very interesting, saying maybe we already have dual governance in this country. Maybe we've got the Labor Party and Jacinda Ardern and then Nanaima Hooter in the Maori caucus, and maybe <coughs> that's the power sharing that is already going on here in Aotearoa, New Zealand.